start. I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their night here and joining us for this uh, Chain Technical Initiative, Technology Initiative. Um, I have Jim, Jim, and Todd that are KTI members to give a presentation for you. Water, coffee, snacks, please help yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and before we dive in, uh, if it's okay with everyone, uh, I'm recording this with a KCC TV camera. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, it will help us take notes and stuff. If everyone, if nobody objects, we can also potentially, if there's a, a good, interesting meeting, put it up on their channel, and that might help generate more interest, more feedback from people, which is what this is all about. The more, uh, the more the Office of Broadband hears from us about what our needs and problems and possible solutions that we think are, uh, the more good things are likely to happen, <laughs> these improvements. Um, so does, does anybody mind if we go ahead and record this? I'd rather, I'd rather turn it off than keep anybody from talking, so. Yep. I don't think we have to be shy people. Okay, I mean, yeah, both of us will be here, so. Um, all right, great, then we'll leave it running and, uh, and see where that goes. And uh, this is really uh, wonderful to see such a good turnout. We were at Little Fork yesterday, and one person Okay. <laughs> Which we had a good conversation for you know an hour or so and covered a lot of ground, but uh, I'm now I'm really excited to have uh, all you guys here. Bob just came for the snacks. <laughs> yes. Not anyway. why you were here. Well, what's that? Not why they said. All right. So um, <clears throat> this is all related to the um, Digital Equity Act passed at the federal level uh, and. As part of that, we're, um, there's a bunch of funding available for this first phase, which is basically gathering information. Um, all the states that choose to participate, including Minnesota, are working on a statewide digital equity plan. That's all about, do people have access to technology, to the internet, the skills, the devices? Uh, can they get them repaired if they need help? Can they get help? Um, it's those kind of issues. What are the barriers that uh, are keeping some people from being able to take full advantage of the potential that technology and good internet offers to build the communities that we want to build, and kind of keep up with things, and just kind of evolve the way we want to evolve, um, and just take full advantage of the opportunities. So that's what digital equity is about. The Digital Equity Act includes another phase after that, during which uh, there will be money available for actually trying to solve some of the problems, so try to improve the situation and much of what uh, that money goes towards will depend on what the state hears from the different communities. There's about 90 communities doing meetings like this, and, and 90 including like Kuching is all one community from that perspective, right? So there's 90 other groups doing this in their areas. Um, so and in all little towns and cities and stuff, and I don't know how many, but um, it's really good, and we're very happy to be a part of this. This is the kind of thing that the Kuching Technology Initiative uh, exist to do anyway prior to the Equity Act. We started in 2018. We got a bunch of money from the Blandon Foundation. Um, we've done a number of projects. Um, our initial focus was primarily on getting good, quality, fast, reliable internet to the whole county, or at least to greatly increase how many people have it. And through our work with uh, Paul Bunyan Communications and uh, doing the Highway 3, uh, 332, Pelham Junction, all the way through. Um, Ericsburg and so, um, they were able to provide some of the fastest internet in the county to people who had the least internet in the county. You guys have pretty good internet here, I believe, but we'll explore that as we dive into things. And then also, uh, Midco is uh, expanding east of Jackfish Bay to that whole area, and now we're focusing on just a few little pockets that are left over where service isn't quite good. Um, we're also looking at improving cellular service as well, but now that more and more people have at least a, a, a cable going to their house, whether they can pay for it or not is a whole other question. Whether they know how to use it, whether they can afford a computer is another question. So KTI is also switching to look at issues of equity, digital equity, and whether people can get on and use those things. Um, so that's a little bit about us, a little bit about the Digital Equity Act and what led to having these meetings. Do you have any questions on that before we dive in? Okay. Um, so, And this is going to be pretty informal. For, forgive me if I'm a little bit uh, not necessarily totally polished. Jackie Nagel um, is part of our uh, evolving progress at the Kuchitin Technology Initiative. We were able to bring her on as an American Connection Corps Fellow of the AmeriCorps program. And she's working for us full time 
flu this year, and we're working on getting another fellow to replace her uh, in August. So she was working full time on this. She's the one who set up all of these meetings, and uh, unfortunately, she got sick and she was unable to come. So uh, Todd and I are taking over with relatively little prep, so it's a little rough around the edges, and if we don't know all the answers to all your questions, uh, please uh, roll with us on that. Uh, there's eight main populations that are targeted by the Equity Act, uh, low-income households, aging individuals over 60 years of age, incarcerated people, uh, veterans, people with disabilities, people with language barriers, minority groups, and rural individuals. And Christian County ticks a lot of those boxes for everybody, um, and some of our uh, population ticks the rest of the boxes. Um, so it's basically, we're, we're part of what they're trying to reach out and help. Um, so, we can dive into kind of the, the technology questions and kind of get the, the ball rolling as a hand raising exercise we're going to start with. It's like you to raise your hand if any of the things I'm about to list apply to you. Uh, do you have internet access at your home? Do you have internet access at your home? Not everyone. Most people. Or is that everyone? Nope, a couple of hands are down. Um, do you have a laptop at your home or a desktop? Yeah, a few fewer people, but most folks. Does your laptop or desktop work? I want to ask those the way around. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> Sitting there. Uh, do you have a smartphone? Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Smarter than I am. A lot of folks, not quite everyone. Um, and does your smartphone work? The parallel question to that, of course, as well. I have more that don't work than I have that work, but okay. Um, is your internet at home fast enough for your needs? Okay. Okay. You don't know what fast is until you've seen it. Okay, well, yeah, fast enough for your needs. There's always faster out there. But uh, anyway, is the internet at your home reliable? Does it work when you want it to work, or is it dropping out, or all that? Okay. Similar answer. Um, how does the digital divide impact you? Now, this, we're past the hand raising questions, I guess, but um, so we have, after this, we have a bunch of different questions to just kind of stimulate the conversation. Mostly, we're happy to talk about <clears throat> what KTI is and the digital, digital Equity Act, some ideas that we have on what we want to do, but we are quite here primarily to hear from you, your questions, your concerns, your thoughts about what can be done better um, on anything related to digital equity or technology in general. Um, and does anybody have, have anything they want to toss out right off the top? If not, we'll toss out some um, ice-breaking questions. Um, well, what challenges does your household face regarding digital inclusion? Anyone want to talk about any of the challenges that they have in their old household? You guys didn't raise your hands about having uh, internet, correct? I don't know if you want to comment on that or not, unless we just yet. Um, well, Yes, sir. Okay, we live all five miles off East of the Pole. Okay. And we were just top the cable until a few years ago, and they ran, last year, they ran halfway out with the fiber optic and stopped, and they said they pushed it the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. There's about 14 homes out there, and there's two of us that can have internet. Hmm. It's really not fantastic. That was, that was Paul Bunyan, and they no, just. That's Ron Ron Frontier. Frontier. Paul okay. Bunyan won't come out our way. Okay. And they stopped just short of your... A mile, um, they came a mile and a half. Okay. And they were doing... Uh, Frontier was putting in fiber to the home? No. No, they ran... We lived just four, four mi five miles, and they ran a little over two miles with the fiber optic and stopped and put mm -hmm. a little booster thing in and said it will push it through the wire the rest of the way. Okay. And there was only two of us out there that could have internet. <laughs> After that was pushed? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, all but it has rescue full fully service for that. The city limit. Okay. The city is on that. <laughs> if you want fiber optic, you have to pay twenty thousand dollars to get it. Okay. <laughs> that obviously is going to be outside of most folks' reach. Yeah, okay. but <laughs> also you have to remember the city limits is actually bigger than the actual city proper. So some of the city, some of the people here who cannot access the Paul Bunyan or Frontier. Well, they can get Frontier. Um, you can't get Paul Bunyan or not. They're still in city limits, but they're out of town. Okay. So like my mom lives a mile out of town, and she can only get Frontier, and Frontier is less than reliable. Okay. Um, we have two microphones that are. Uh, there's a receiver plugged into the camera there, and this is echoey enough that 
you don't mind, I'd, I'd like uh, folks to pass it around. You're not, you don't have to keep talking if you don't want to. Be hand it to the next person who wants to. My initial survey indicated that Frontier was not the thing to go to. Mm -hmm. And then I called Paul Bunyan, and Paul Bunyan couldn't get off the phone fast enough. Really? And uh, so then I went with Hughes. And Hughes works okay so long as their bandwidth is sufficient. Mm -hmm. But that's about, but it, it is very inconsistent. And their bandwidth really sucks. Uh, right and that's now, Hughesnet for satellite internet. Right now right. I've got uh, Starlink. Okay. How is Starlink treating you? Outstanding. Okay. It's uh, my, where I worked, we had a T1 connection. And this is pretty close to having the T1 connection. Okay. Good. Does anyone else use Starlink or know folks in the area who do? Mm -hmm. Yeah? You, you have it yourself? Oh, no. No, okay. I have Paul Bunyan. How many, how many people would you say in the community um, are using Starlink? Uh, we know of, I know of one other person. I know of two. Two. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know of yeah. two. Two people yeah. in the area? They said it's like $800 just to get the disk, and then it's free. It's not free. Right. It's then not then free. you're paying like hundred dollars a month, something like that. So. Oh, well, then yeah. it's not free. Yeah. There's a month. There's a monthly fee, and it's a very expensive upfront too. Six hundred dollars for the package, and then one hundred twenty a month after that. That's yeah. I, the real issue is once you get it, it works. Uh huh. As opposed to well, I don't know if Paul Bunyan works because they're they're uh, not not my choice. Right. And they refuse to do business with me. Okay. Because of your location, I'm guessing. Right. Okay. Um, taking I'm a step. Not, I'm not five miles out. I'm less than a mile out. Okay. For now, they're sticking to city limits. They're strictly city limits. I am within city limits. You are within city limits. But they okay. won't service my where I'm at. Quick question: Who all here is within city limits? Or perhaps the better question, the easier question, might be: Who here does not live within city limits? Okay. So we got a we got a reasonable mix. You, know, you also. Um, and w what would you say the total population is of the Big Falls community? Well, let's, let's ask first, you would know. In city limits, it is? I know the population is 175. 175. That's within city limits. So would you say the bigger community that are still part of the Big Falls community, it, what would you say, put a number on that? Uh, is it? Twice as much? Yeah. No. no. Another 50 or so, so it's 225, something like that total? Okay. Ge well, geographically, if you look, there's Big Falls and then it's Swamp. So we don't have, like, you know, most, most places right. have outlying farms and outlying, you know, within five miles there's another community. We don't have that. Yeah. We have to go, you know, there, yeah. Treatsville is. Right. But it's a little higher ground out there. Yeah. So we don't have an extensive um, outlying, I guess you'd okay. say, you know, within. Yeah, number six. Two miles out, you're done. <laughs> well, that's about what I figured. I live up in International Falls. I've been there a little over 20 years and stuff. But so I've been down here, but not as much. So uh, it's good to confirm that. Um, any other comments off of building off of that for internet access? Um, does anybody feel they have reasonably reliable and reasonably fast internet? Both. Do. You do. Well, that's right. You said you said as much. Um, well, for for each of you, I'm interested in all of you came here for a reason. I'd be interested in hearing from each and every person, if you want, is saying exactly why uh, you, you chose to come here, what it is that brought you here, what did you want to say? Um, and and I, I'll go ahead and start with you since you were just talking. Um, and since internet speed and reliability isn't an issue for you, uh, what did bring you here? Uh, I was asked to come. Okay. <laughs> Show your knowledge and, uh, and all that. Anyone else? Well, I would think that if he has to go as far as Starlink, <laughs> that mm -hmm. our local services are failing him. So that's partly, would you that agree would with be, that? That would be what I would say. That, would you agree that she was speculating that the fact that you are, are needed to go with Starlink well, is a poor reflection on the other options? Well, I couldn't get Paul Bunyan that. that right. And uh, uh, HughesNet, uh, my, my access time ranged from uh, five seconds to a half hour. Okay. And so. Uh, for how long or, you or had even a connection? Longer, or even longer. Okay. And uh, so when you go and do do a time study as to how how you're accessing mm -hmm. the satellite, uh, it, it sucks. 
Um, in town, the majority of people have Club One. Uh -huh. In town, and because Paul Bunyan came and ran wires through mm -hmm. when they ran the line through to International Falls. Uh, it's the out, outlying areas that are hurting. Yeah, yeah. there's three houses on my road. Uh -huh. on the por my portion of the on the portion of the road. I'm on. And they, they, I was told they basically refused to service that. And like I, like I told you, they, they could, I couldn't get them, they couldn't get off the phone fast enough. Hmm. I, don't think it, I don't think it goes on six. We, we do have good maps of where the edge of their service area is. So that's, that is information that we already have um, available pretty well. Um, oh, yes. My biggest complaint with my internet service is speed and when it works. Okay. If it works. So both speed and reliability. Yeah. And I think you said, you, which, what's your service? Is it Frontier? Frontier. Yep. Okay. Um, when you do have access, when you are able to get on, are, you, are your devices adequate? Do you feel that you know what you, how to do what you want to do on yeah. the internet while the internet's working? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, are you guys either in your own personal lives or with uh, neighbors and friends that you have, family? Um, do you feel that there are people in the community for whom, if, if and when they have good internet access, that have issues with either having devices to do what they need to do or the knowledge and skills to do what they need to do? You mean it, they don't have it or they do? Are, are, are there people in the community who don't have the devices or, I guess it's two separate questions, so I'd want the answer to be clear. Uh, people who might have the devices or not, but who don't have the skills or knowledge. They, they know that there's stuff they want to do on the internet, but they don't know how. Is that a significant issue around here? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's yes. Age, we have an older population in town. Is that, is that the case for any, anyone want to speak about their own personal experience related to that, either themselves or their friends and relatives? Well, what do you want to do? Um, well, one of the things we're, we're interested in is what can be done to help people get the skills. Device is a, li is a little more concrete. You've got the, if you can, if funding can be found to get a device and get it in somebody's hand, that's a relatively easy to solve pro uh, problem. But the knowledge and skills thing can be a little more hard to do because you have to have a way to get access to that information. It has to be able to sink in. It has to meet you where you're at. Um, and, Are you, you know. Going to be looking for information or are you going to be looking for say structural information mm -hmm. or uh, just are you going to do it for history um, what, what are you doing what, what am I doing? What are we doing? What, 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 what the person who's trying to use the internet? Yes exactly so that's that's part of why it's so hard to find the, the one device can do all those different things but they need to learn the specifics of how to do the one thing they're looking at. Did you want to I just wanted to pipe in. Um, maybe does anybody have? Can somebody give an example of something they were wanting to do on the internet that they had trouble doing, or that that, would, that they could have used, you know, help or instruction on, or just you know, just a, a, a concrete example might be good. I can't even hear. Oh, sorry. Uh, Todd was asking if anybody had some specific examples of things that they wanted to do on the internet that they just couldn't quite figure out how. So turn it off. <laughs> how to turn it on, yeah, basic, uh, basic access, yeah. How to get your device connected to the internet, how to get it to talk to a printer. Anybody had that problem? Yeah. To, <laughs> yes, I'm nodding and uh, chuckling and all that, so. Wirelessly. Wirelessly, yep, yeah. that can be a thing. <laughs> I bet. And also, I mean, just like knowing what type of, say, laptop you need to do certain things, like if you're doing graphics, or whatever, just trying to find that knowledge is, is sometimes difficult. Figuring out what the right device is what, to meet your depending needs. Depending on what mm -hmm. your needs are, like for doing photo sorting, you know, if you want to do Adobe to keep track of your pictures, you have to have a certain <coughs> level of speed and RAM to do that. Right. And not a, you know, I probably would have gone and bought totally the wrong one. Not, then somebody told me I needed twice Twice as much RAM as what I was looking at. So. Right, right. Yep. That's, but that's the difference from 
from using the internet for just about anything. Mm -hmm. and, and you know part of the problem you is? You got software. You can buy a brand new computer and a year later it's outdated. That's the whole problem with this crap. Yeah. Well, he's speaking now. Well, it's true. Yeah. You can go spend a thousand dollars today, and by guarantee, in six months, it's no good. It's outdated. Mm. That's true. And uh, I don't know how many people have so experienced this. So that's what you got to think about: is it worth all the headache to keep mm -hmm. upgrading, or do you go big enough the first time so you can get through a whole year? Yeah. And it ain't just the internet, it's the computer people that got this figured out. Mm -hmm. It keeps digging in your pocket. And part of that is the, they, when companies your decide RAM to stop speed, supporting your something. hard drive speeds, all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't know nothing about computers, but <laughs> my main computer. I know enough when I drove a truck over 31 years that the last 10 years have been fucking miserable because if a computer goes down, they can't print your paperwork, and I gotta sit in the doctor for five or six hours. That's yeah. true. Well, how the hell did you do it ten years ago? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All by hand, but we right. can't even do that. You got something to add? My main computer in my shop that I use every day is probably eight, nine years old. Okay. Internet connected to it works excellent. Does mm -hmm. the job I need. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't need to be upgraded. Okay. Other than the fact that. They're now no longer, no longer supporting Windows 8. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but beyond that, it still works good. I still okay. use it every day. Yeah. Depends on what programs you're running on it. Yes, it does. Yeah. A lot of it depends on what you're using. Yeah. Of course, I've got a 30 year old business. business too. <laughs> what? But if you're looking for stuff and you want to know, I mean, then you got to. Buy the expensive computers with the fast drives and shit in them. But then I'll guarantee within a year you're gonna have to start doing upgrades because we haven't. But... It's no different than your smartphone. How many times a year do you get upgrades on your smartphone saying upgraded? We get that on our TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. What every we don't what? Get sound. About every two we months, we got to upgrade it. We don't need an upgrade. Oh, we don't have a smart TV. You're calling TV. some foreigner. Yeah, we don't have smart TVs. Yeah. <laughs> I get a smart TV, but I don't know how to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't have a smart TV. <laughs> you have grandkids and stuff that help out with that at all? Nobody. Figuring out? Nobody. Yeah. I, I have them, but they're not here. I, I think a, a lot of tech support, uh, for most people, their first line of tech support is, is friends and family. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And, but that is something that not everyone has, at least not everyone has to hand. Maybe they're long distance, which is so much harder helping somebody's there, but there's also people that just don't have that person they can call. They may have other people in their lives who don't know anything more about technology than they do. Um, so, you know, how do you help folks like that out? I think there's a lot of trickle down technology knowledge, people with pretty high knowledge, they help people that know a little bit less, they help people that know a little bit less, and it kind of spreads out that way, but that just doesn't reach everyone equally. Um, and you know, how to help everyone else. Um, so, everybody's got the geek squad in their pocket. Yeah. <laughs> so w when you do need technology help, what happens? Are you able to find any way to get it, or does it just not? There's a man in town that'll help. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'll mm -hmm. help you out? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Or, or then if you mess, if you mess around with the, all the, things on your TV, you can finally get it to come through. Yeah. I, I, I manage to watch what I want to, you know. Okay. I, I get all the the national channels and all the, the good channels and the bad channels and the weather channels, and right. I get enough. Okay. Yep. Okay. I get to watch the twins, and <laughs> they came for out better and for worse. They yep. came out second best today. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I'm guessing most people have used uh, the internet to find answers to their technological questions. Um, have you guys watched YouTube videos or other video sources for your how-tos for various tech issues? Mm -hmm. So has anybody here started using any of this new artificial intelligence stuff, chat GPT, the new Bing, any of that? Has anyone tried any of those tools? It's, it's not a magic bullet and it's gonna cause a lot of trouble, but it's also can be another way to get answers. One of the nice things about it is you can ask it your technological questions in fairly normal language. It's called a natural language model. And you can just describe as best you can 
what it is that you're trying to solve, it'll spit out an answer for you. And you can then ask it follow-up questions and it'll build off of what you already asked it. It'll know what you asked it. Um, of course, you have to have the device. You have to have the internet connection and you have to be at least reasonably comfortable trying this brand new way to get information um, through a new interface. So, you know, it doesn't just magically solve everything, but it is a new thing that's out there that might end up being part of the picture of how to get that technological help that people need. So. Upgrade to Alexa. <laughs> Upgrade to Alexa, yeah. Yep. I have Alexa and she won't work because I only have the hotspot on my phone. Mm -hmm. It's not strong enough to work in Alexa. All right. Hey, Todd, would you mind walking around for this side of the room sure. with your microphone? Uh, and, and toss out questions as well. Um, Got to prepare the next one while also listening. <laughs> but this is a really good discussion. Does this have any bearing to do with TV too? It will. The internet? Well, it can. I mean, most TVs these days are internet connected or can be. Antenna and mm -hmm. you, you just have a TV with an antenna? Yep. Yeah. It's so. a smart TV, but we don't have internet. We're a block and a half away from city limits. Uh, I'll let you mic them. So a um, block and a half away, they don't come down. They head down his direction. Dickey Ferguson yeah, lives down there. Mm -hmm. They head down that direction, but there's three houses right there in a block and a half. Mm -hmm. That have no... They stopped, yeah. turned the corner, and away they went. Interesting. Well, and you're not able to get it from you have you have a landline. No, nope. no. Nope. They stopped that coming down the whole bit. There used to be a out. landline there. Okay. Frontier, I think, was down there at one no. point. And then when that was done, the wire was cut. They come and pulled everything, and yeah, who? That was okay. it. Uh, well, KTI is working on uh, identifying those areas that simply don't even have the option where you you can't pay any of the internet service providers uh, to connect because you're just outside of their area, whether you're a little bit out or a lot out. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, Jackie Nagel is gathering a lot of that data. She's putting it into GIS and working on prioritizing, you know, what areas we can do, requesting proposals from internet service providers uh, to provide service to those areas. So um, those of you who are in that situation, you can speak it out right now to be recorded or anything, or you can make sure before you leave that we have your name and address written down and so that we're sure that it's already in our information. We already have a lot of that information, but it's not perfect. And knowing who both is in that situation and actively cares about it, because not everyone does, like, yeah, I don't have any internet and that's fine with me. Well, that's fine, that's <laughs> more power to you. But um, you came here for a reason, obviously, and I yeah. assume that was part of it. So we can make sure we get uh, your address and stuff written down or uh, Victoria can possibly gather some of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Didn't forget they can fill out the survey, right? There's a question. Yes. Yeah. So um, one of the ways we're gathering data is the survey that you've probably heard of. Well, you've all been given a paper copy of it. Um, the survey is also available. I'll get to you in just a minute. The survey is also available online. It's on our website, and there's a link to it from the newspaper's website, I believe. Um, that is part of how we're gathering data, and the more data we gather about what the situation is, particularly the issues, the more power that gives us to get solutions uh, to those issues, so um, please do fill out the survey. You can fill it out on paper. If you do, somebody else has to type it in, but that's fine. We'd rather have to type it in than to not have the information. Um, sir. With a case like Rod and them and th these folks that are out there, is this on a demand basis? I mean, you got three houses down here. They might get it because they have enough demand, but you got an individual out over here, and well, we ain't gonna waste the money to get this technology out to you because you're the only person out there. Yeah. And you're 80 years old, so, you know, no offense, but when you're gone, there's probably not going to be nobody out there, so we ain't going to waste our... Is that where we're at with this? Well, demand and economics are definitely part of it, um, supplemented by uh, the funding sources, federal and state funding, uh, private nonprofit funding, various funding sources, uh, but they also want to pay some attention to, is anybody going to use it? The, the big project that Paul Bunyan did from Pelham Junction through Ericsburg why did it stop there? It didn't go to Ray. Well, right. KTI spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, a similar effort to what we're doing now, pushing out a survey, knocking on doors, getting local people to ask their neighbors. If you, they, they all, they, they, the people who were really motivated understood, if only they are making noise, it ain't gonna matter. But if they can get 10 other neighbors to write the same letter, oh, okay, now the company knows that there's, so a, a, there's a whole cluster case. there. It is in part a demand basis. Right. Um, Paul Bunyan decided not to include Ray 
because despite getting the same effort of outreach, we weren't getting nearly as much response. I'm like, well, that means fewer people will sign up. They only have so much, there was actually a fiber shortage around that time, fiber optic cable yeah. shortage. It also costs money and stuff, and you know, I mean, ultimately they all, have to make we money, all so. We understand that you ain't gonna spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to get to right. a house that's 15 miles out of town out in the middle of the boonies. That's just right. unreasonable, but right. you know, these folks are within five miles of city limits and they're not getting nothing. I mean, yeah. even if it's just one person down the road, a lot of these people are, are elderly and they need that yeah. service. Yeah, sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Is, yeah. is that Paul Bunyan didn't want to spend the money okay. to service the three houses that are on, on the portion of the road that I have. Right. But Paul Bunyan didn't go down Highway 6 no. at all. No. They only came into town. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's, but, there's the kind of the issue when, there. When did Paul Bunyan come to this area? Uh, 2013, yeah, 12 years ago. Okay, yeah. so a good, a good chunk of time ago, and, and I, I was not particularly aware of the issues. I don't know what all was going on then. You know, now it's 10 plus years later, um, so the situation has changed, especially the funding situation. There's a lot more. It was already heading this way anyway, but with the pandemic, boy, <laughs> the federal and the state legislatures, they get it now. We've got to have this internet thing. Um, and so a lot more money is available. So that does change the picture as well. Um, while we're on this topic, one of these handouts we had, I'll just borrow yours, I'll get it right back. Uh, the line extension connection program. I'm not an expert on it. Jackie could probably fill in more useful details. This is primarily for people who are in a service area, but if they want to get connected, their driveway is so long the, the metric usually is a quarter mile or longer, but it can be a mile, you know, whatever, is so long that, yeah, sure, they'll hook you up, but you're gonna have to pay a couple thousand dollars for the extra labor of doing that, which there's some logic to that. This program is about uh, grant money to cover, I don't know what portion of that cost, I don't know if it's half, I don't know if it's all, but to help pay for those extra costs to get hooked up. Now, if you're in an area, if you're in an area, we've, you're just barely outside, but you're not in their service area, this probably doesn't apply. But KTI um, and other groups and entities um, are interested in finding those pockets and expanding it. And certainly areas where logically it makes sense, like you've got you know, six houses that are just right across the street from an the area that is well provided, and they're not way spread out, they're you know, reasonably clustered together. Those are the areas we're looking for that to also prioritizing. That makes the next sense. Let's find those areas, even if it's just a couple houses, and let's see what funding we know we can, we can tap into and what internet service providers are willing to then make those connections. So that is part of what we're trying to do. Todd? That was what was sad, is there was plenty of people on Highway 6 that would have, they might have signed up right at the front end hmm. because it wasn't such a needed service as it is now. Mm -hmm. is that, if that makes sense. They were still okay with Frontier because we didn't have all the smart TVs and whatnot. I mean, some people did. Mm -hmm. They were available at that time. However, within a few years, it was a noticeable problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and Frontier is, I, I mean, I don't think you understand the, the difference between, in, in Big Falls, between Frontier service and Paul Bunyan service. It, you're a Ferrari and a, a go-kart. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a go-kart that's sputtering a mm -hmm. lot. Uh -huh. It's bad. Like, okay. It's bad. My mom had to switch to Hughes now. I'm mostly here for her because I have great internet because I have Paul Bunyan. But, um, she's she's had to go to HughesNet. It's really confusing for them. They're in their mm. 80s, and it's just a struggle. Right. So, and I am a, officially her technology person. So it's my struggle as well, um, you know, dealing with her customer service and everything else. And you know, what, I think what some of the frustration that people don't really understand is it going to the you know it's got to go to the box and then it goes out from wherever the box is, right? Right. Well, yeah, it goes past her house. It goes past his dad's house. It goes. You know, right down 71. People on Highway 6 drive past the thing every day that's not going their way. It just seems unfair. Yeah. So, fix it. We keep on talking about all these devices and these new devices. There's a lot of health devices out there and stuff that our elderly could would help their lives a lot, but well, they're outside of the internet. Right. You know? So and, and now we're talking about so, so, they, so they could buy the device all day long, but well, right. sorry, it's a paperweight. So in, in some cases, we're talking about devices that where the person doesn't know how to use it, they just right. have to wear it or whatever, but without internet, it isn't an right. option. You know, so. your first alert type of devices and stuff. Right, and that's, that's a good point. that's sad is because, like I said, within five miles of city limits, they're just screwed. 
you know, might have to move or suffer the health consequences, which can be serious. Is there anybody here who could have gotten um, high-speed internet, but they didn't because of that last, you know, connection cost, you know, from the long driveway syndrome? Well, I mean, what do you mean? Because if if Paul Bunyan won't, or if Paul Bunyan or someone like them won't even come down my road, that's that's like having a big driveway. It's like it, but it, it sounds like in your situation you were near but outside of their service area. Is that correct, or did they not give you a clear answer? They they wouldn't talk to me. Okay. <laughs> huh. I was just passing. We're over a mile from where they came. They, okay. They never went out Highway Six whatsoever. So, so it sounds like outside their service area. In yeah, that case. we're still in city limits. Sure, understood. But, but they just did not go that they, direction. They, they went west and then go east. And there's okay. Probably twenty houses out yeah, there. Yeah, there's a lot of millions out there. Okay. How many houses would you say out there? Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. It also affects people's housing values because more and more people are uh, working from home. Yes. So if if people want to move here for the lifestyle, but they can't work from home because they don't have a reliable internet connection, mm -hmm. it, it does affect the, the value or the being able to, not so much the value, but it, to actually be yeah. able to yes. sell their home. Yes. Um, some of the questions on here near the end are kind of speculative, what if kind of questions. Do you guys have a sense of what would be different about the community if everyone in and outside of city limits did have the internet available that they want and they could afford it, how would that transform here? I mean, do you know of people that wanted to move here but didn't because of the, the internet? Would there be growth? Are there people who want to expand their business but they can't because they don't have the internet to, to support it? Uh, any other thoughts like that on, on what would change, what you more or less know or suspect would change if the internet problem was solved? A healthier community. Because once again, going back to your your first response devices and whatnot, <clears throat> you know, our elderly, because this community is mainly elderly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just what it is. If we had the internet out to our seniors to where they had that internet for their devices that they could be having to right. give them a better lifestyle or them being able to communicate with their their family and whatnot, and that's a huge morale for people, it would make a very more healthier community. Who, who is or knows somebody who hasn't been able to do telehealth, mental health, physical health services through a web meeting with a doctor where that would have made a difference? We did it through my smartphone. Mm. I did it through my did, hotspot on my phone. And did that work for you? Would it, it worked, but you know, I'm paying extra for that if I had internet, you know, and, and it runs your phone down. Yeah. Yeah. over a period of time. Okay. And my smart TV will not work off the hotspot. Okay. It's not strong enough. Was there another reply there? I tried to have Zoom and it wasn't fast enough internet for that. It wouldn't work. Yeah, the hotspot wouldn't run our Zoom either. Mm -hmm. Hotspot wouldn't run your Zoom? Yeah, I know my daughter has talked about moving here. We're spending time here in Nashville, but she does a lot of Zoom meetings and mm -hmm. that type of thing. So um, I actually got internet at the house so that she could actually do it. But if she she would love to get someplace out of out away from the town, but mm -hmm. she. She doesn't have inter good, mm -hmm. reliable internet. She can't. And what is your internet service provider again, Frontier? We, no, we have Paul Bunyan. Oh, you, have Paul, oh, you do have Paul Bunyan. We have Paul Bunyan, but she would like to get someplace out of. We're one of the lucky ones. We got the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Verizon told us we, to they do could do better. People like Brad service out in his area. In other words, the areas that don't have the, the service. It's not so much the town where we already have the good service. It's to get them Service. Well, I, I wouldn't actually quite agree with that. We want to we want to find all the technology problems, not just internet access. Um, it, it, it more more the more people the more people in our county that have good internet, the more we are increasingly focusing on issues of do they have the device, do they know how to use it. Um, programs to help the elderly learn how to use the internet would help. My, my parents don't understand it, and I I'm not I can muddle through myself. But I'm not able to teach them how to how to do it. 
it just I'm saying much fresh just, old people, is it? <laughs> do, do you have a sense of, of what kind of <laughs> just, just just training is what, all what what kind of program to help the elderly or any other group build just, up their skills would just would work availability of I don't know what so uh, well I'm thinking you know concretely what could we actually do uh, would would meetings at the, at, the, at this building meetings at the town hall help uh, would they would we have to yeah. go to people's homes you know what would actually work to help them out I don't know the answer to that okay just availability Something. of of help I guess okay. I you, you've had your hand up for a bit yes I work for Ena Healthcare okay. uh, and I about four out, four miles out mm -hmm. there all I had was dial up connection okay but my company so stepped in okay. and we got a special uh they got a special um, thing out there okay. that boosted up where I could do my claims okay. for me, like three seconds a, at a time. So they can, your internet people can do it if they want to help you out, but you might have to pump a little bit of a pull. I had it with United Healthcare. Do you, do you know what they what they provided that was the solution? What it was like a brought? booster box. Cell phone booster, probably. Yeah, it a... was a metal container type thing, and and it, uh, they charged my company so much money to put it in there, mm -hmm. but they did it, and we okay. we had the fast internet out there at that time. Mm -hmm. But when I retired, mm -hmm. they took that away. Oh. Okay. And now I got nothing. <laughs> so, so what what were you doing on the internet that you can't do anymore for your person? Obviously not working, but um, personal stuff. Was there stuff that you were able to do before that you can't do now since that box is um, Has it not mattered that much? It was just working? for the company only. Right. That that was their number because it was a separate number and everything. Okay. And uh, my personal telephone landline, it, uh, it was a very slow connection now. Okay. Right. But at least I had it for my company to keep my job. <laughs> yeah, and United Healthcare is one of our bigger employers. Yeah, they um, were spread around. And, uh, Todd, over there. Um, I was going back to the who, how to help. Give me to hold this. All right. <laughs> um, I was going back to how to help the people in the community with you know like you're offering like you're saying like maybe classes or something like that. And I honestly think that technology moves too fast for that. Um, I think it's more of like you're going to have to either have someone trained locally to kind of help people or have mm -hmm. somebody come and help people in person because we're talking about people who don't necessarily understand the verbiage involved with technology. Sure. Uh, and so you don't want to, you don't want to make old people feel stupid, okay? <laughs> like that's the biggest thing is you don't. Yes. They know a lot of stuff. Just because they don't know technology, you don't want them to feel like they're less than because they don't understand it and i think that Absolutely. i think it's important that it would be a personal connection with somebody who can explain things and maybe walk them through it um mm -hmm. i've like i've helped my mom when she's been so frustrated that she hung up and just called me and said come back out here and call these people or she helped made them go on hold so that i could get out there to help her um however if there was somebody that could do that I don't know, just walk people through stuff. I think that would be a better solution. And yes, training does help, but like I said, it moves too fast. Yeah, um, just like he was saying, your, your stuff is outdated. Um, I found a workaround. I have a really good computer guy. I have a computer that can continually be added onto for years, um, but I needed to do that for work. Um, hmm. But that is what it is. Um, I just keep thinking there's like, yeah, helpline would work or you say YouTube videos, but if they're already having trouble getting on the internet, yep. how is the YouTube video going to help? Yep. It, Absolutely so you have right. to really take it way back mm -hmm. to where you got to meet your people where they're at. You can't you can't be like, well, watch that YouTube video. Got to meet like, people where yeah, they're at. Well, yeah. that'd be great. And <laughs> they're not, like, what's YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how do you find YouTube? <laughs> I don't know what the solution is, and I think classes would help. You know, where they could bring their device or once a week have somebody bring it in, but. If somebody wants to watch the Twins game, they can't get their smart TV to work, they're going to be ticked. <laughs> and, yeah. and you don't want to get in between some people and their twins, right, Lorraine? <laughs> so, yes, go ahead. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. <laughs> I, I, I agree with Heidi. I think that the educational piece is very important in moving forward. And 
and uh, it would have to be a continuing education. Todd knows that I had a hard time adapting to a lot of new digital things myself. But I think that it's very important that the accessibility is there before we start trying to teach them, right? Mm -hmm. So my question is, with all the money that's coming out of the grants here, how is that being, how, do we, how are we determining, not that it's your guys' thing to determine, how are we determining who gets that money and who's going to expand their areas of operations so we can get hooked up and have to get into these educational conversations? And a competitive internet. Because if they want to help the people up here, why is most of the money going to the big cities well, then? Just curious where it is. If you want to bring everybody up to par, then they should focus up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just remember, with that, to me, in my personal opinion, comes more government control. Well, I think the point of the money, uh, the, these grants, is to, to reach out to the areas that don't have the internet access, access correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got Under kids, we've, underserved we've got kids in the underserved the areas, yeah, but who is deciding yeah. where communities, many communities. that money is going? Yeah. Yeah. How are they, just, how are they yeah. deciding? I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't spread around, I, around I the state, I don't know where they are. I about who decides myself. If you remember during COVID, is it um, like Elk River, well, the, the kids were coming. The, the Office of Broadband Development the, the, does know the answer to that question. I don't. <laughs> There's definitely a list of all it's 90 communities. So. Be qualified for it. There's uh -huh. 90 areas in which county is considered one to cover yeah, exactly. the whole state. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just covering the whole state as it Could be, yeah. Well, so one part of, of what you were just talking about, I mean, the big, with the big cities and all that, like the flat, flat out capitalism will take care of that to a fair degree. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, <laughs> right. So now that there's, so that the emphasis no on. If they want to get everybody in the rural community up to par and yes. updated, that's where it should be focused at. I agree. Okay. That, and that is what the talk is because saying. So we'll see technology. how the reality comes out. But there's a lot of yeah. other rural areas other than just up north. Yeah. Down southern Minnesota, western Minnesota, there's a lot of rural areas that are like us, and that I would guess that those 90 are probably spread out in those areas, not in the not in the metro area where they don't have the need. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would be happy to have KTI on our website and on our Facebook page post a map of where they all are or a list or whatever. It's it's available information. Anybody yeah. who has frontier <laughs> they don't have internet. Yeah, and it doesn't matter where you live. Just a minute. Jane has a good point. If you remember um, during let's COVID, take Jane and then we'll take you. when ahead. the kids were online school, the kids had to go to the bar in town and sit outside to get internet here. Hmm. So that's how bad it is up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not available. We do need inter a decent internet service in this area for the simple fact. Every government agency and a lot of corporations they are saying, if you don't have internet, we can't deal with you. You can't do it on paper anymore. You have to do it on the internet. More government control. Yep. <laughs> um, so if, if there were to be like a, a class or something with, with a person coming or a person from here, uh, that would be even better. But somebody teaching a class on whatever it is that people want to learn, and yes, it does get out of date very, very quickly. Where would it make sense to have something like that? Um, I mean, at the bar? <laughs> here? Um, and the answer is prob probably in here. Well, at least in this building, whether it's downstairs or up here, but in the community center. I mean, once again, you got to think, this is a small town. Yep. We are a small community. Yes. It all revolves around here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And once again, that another pointed out demand. Yeah. We are a very small town and we're probably the most remote small town in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Where does that put us on the map of getting this? Yeah. Well, but but you know, you're not going to be doing finite element analysis for structural stuff. Mm -hmm. What you're going to be doing here is you're going to be lay, figuring out how to how to work up a project, how to lay it out on the how to lay it out and the internet contributes to that by giving you, say, patterns on how to do that. And uh, but in that, if you're talking training, that's the kind of real kind of training you want. Mm -hmm. You need something to uh, how to how to work the where, where the whether you're going to do Word or or write or do Excel and do math or do 
do project planning or stuff like that. Hmm. I want to come back to you. Basically, that, that's what I was going to say, but there's a lot of people there that do not know how to operate the internet. Mm -hmm. And we need educational classes out here to teach those people how to do it. Because yeah. they would have a lot of fun going on the internet. Yeah. Um, Some of our elders, they could, they could benefit from just the basics. How to, how to hook up that, this new smart TV that my, you know, my daughter bought me for Mother's Day this year. Mm -hmm. It's great, but how do I hook it up? Yeah. Right. You know, so that's like, that doesn't yeah. work in a community setting. You have to uh, see, there's no resolution. <laughs> one, of the, one of the examples I give a lot is, you know, it, it, the, the needs range all the way from, you know, being able to be the top tech person at a, at a bank, all the way down to, you know, grandma should be able to watch videos and pictures of her grandkids. Right. Um, and this is the way you do it these days, but if grandma doesn't know how, or grandpa, grandpa's get to watch too. <laughs> uh, then how do we how do we get them there? So, and everything in between. So many people don't learn well in a big setting of people. Number one, half the time they can't hear. Mm. You know, if you're there's people here that I'm sure haven't heard half of what was said because they because of the echo and mm -hmm. that type of thing. Acoustics here. But if you could meet them have a general meeting, you know, a general class, and then pinpoint what they need help with and maybe make appointments and go and spend some time with them one-on-one, -on -one, I think that would be a better way. And I know that's expensive, but maybe we can get volunteers to help with that. Maybe, yeah. Um, so how, who, who here has provided technical help to other people? Doesn't mean you're an expert, just means you've been asked and you were able to do some kind of help getting somebody there. So can you raise your hands up a little higher? I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like about half of the folks here feel that they have provided uh, technical help to other people. And I think that, like I said, I think that's the main way people learn stuff is from other people, um, even if they're not a super duper expert, you know. Um, what would help those of you that are helping other people, but you're not, you know, ninja masters of the internet, what would help you help those other people more? that are coming along. A lot of today on newer things coming yeah, along, having, sure. Uh, being in the loop. Class, be, being able to make sure that you, you've got a phone, but theirs is newer, or you have a computer, but theirs is newer, and, and you don't know how to do that. So mm -hmm. someplace to go to learn that so that you could teach it. So it seems like one possibility here and in a lot of other communities like this could be that you know, there's an occasional class. It could be in person here in this very building. It could be... It could be a Zoom meeting with somebody who can just answer, you know, maybe even less structured rather than today we're going to learn how to do that. But um, just, you know, if there's 10 of you meeting with somebody long distance or in person where you just you bring up what it is that you've been struggling with, what people have been asking you and, and they answer your questions as best but they can. You have to know how to do a Zoom meeting. Well, yeah, but, we're, but in this context, I'm talking about helping the people that are already helping other people yeah. do stuff. So I'm assuming a certain level of sophistication rather than the base knowledge of, I don't even know how to turn mm -hmm. on my phone or my TV or anything. So th uh, those people need help too, but this is one way to help those people is to help other people, the people that they can call. Um, I, I think in, um, how can I say this? More of a, I think the volunteer training would be great, but I think more of a helpline that would be a, you know, something associated with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So if I was at Lorraine's house fixing her TV, I, I, I have never seen this TV. I don't know her internet. I would, could have a, a, like a main helpline to call that is better than some of the helplines I've called because I, Paul Bunyan does have good, um, good helplines, but they're not 24 seven. So sorry, who's who has a helpline? Uh, Paul Bunyan. Has Paul Bunyan great, does have a good helpline. They've got a good helpline, yeah. And they'll take just kind of generic questions, not tied to their service per se. Um, you need to have their service to okay, get but, questions right. answered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you asked, if you if you called up that helpline and said, I, I can't get my Zoom to work today, can you help me figure out what's wrong? Help me with okay. dumber things than that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> they have. Um, you want? Can you give an example of a dumber thing than that uh, that they've helped yeah, you with? Yeah, I can't. I couldn't get. Uh, I couldn't get. The, the smart TV in the living room to work. And about three minutes into the call, I was telling him, oh, I have to reach behind this other TV to, to shut off or to turn off the tower, turn on 
the tower or whatever, unplug it. And he said, there's your problem. And I said, what? He said, that TV is blocking the TV. What are, where are they in relation to each other? And I said, well, they're, this TV is, they're kind of you know, right one in front of the other. He said, well, move the tower out in front of the other TV and see if that works. And that was the problem. Okay. The one TV was blocking the signal from my tower, Wi-Fi tower, to the other TV. That was the entire problem. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's a great story, both in, in, in multiple and, ways, but right. I wonder how many Paul Bunyan customers there are that don't know that that exists, that they can call those, uh, that number and get some help. I don't know. Well, the guys that installed are pretty good about telling you that. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're knowledgeable. But yeah, I was really surprised that that was that easy. Okay. And you know, I was thinking it was going to be a big ordeal, and it wasn't. I know that Mid Midcontinent Communications has, a, which provides a lot, uh, some of the service in our county, a significant part of it. They have some kind of program where they do uh, community education workshops and stuff on technology needs in general, and KTI is looking into that. That's about as much as I can tell you, but we're constantly on the, KTI is constantly on the lookout for things like that. I wasn't particularly aware of this uh, Paul Bunyan helpline that you're talking about. But you don't want to call Frontier's helpline because you will spend approximately three hours on hold. Okay. And then be told to do, or, and then, but then, then you'll do the same thing over and over again three or four times, and then they'll tell you they can't fix it, and they'll send out in a week or so a tech, and that is their solution. Mm -hmm. Until you say, you know, shut off my frontier, I'm taking Paul Bunyan in this, <laughs> yeah, or Hughes, or that's pretty much, you know, it, and then they don't argue, and they just shut it off for you. <laughs> um, we haven't talked much about costs of paying for the internet. Um, everyone, of course, wants it to be not just good, but affordable. There's been a little bit of reference to that. But one of the handouts that we have is about the Affordable Connection Program. Um, and that is for basically anyone who they or their kids or whatever qualify for some kind of income subsidy, reduced cost lunch, there's a variety of different categories on there. Um, there is funding for those people to get less expensive uh, internet, and in some cases, less expensive devices. My understanding is that there are way more people who qualify for that lower cost internet access than actually apply for it, uh, far less than half of the people. And I, I don't know why, some of it might be that they just don't know about the program, some of it might be it's a pain in the butt to apply for it. Maybe you have to apply online, but you can't get online to apply for it. Um, that could well be part of it, but I wanna make sure that at least everyone here knows that that program Isn't exists and similar Isn't programs. You've got a fire on it. You may know other people that are in a situation where they can do that. It, it could partly be a pride issue. You know, I don't, I don't wanna take that money. Well, you, you might say, you know what? You really ought to in this case. Come on, man, just do it. Um, or you can even say, I did it. You should do it too. Um, so if, if anyone wants to comment on any of those kind of programs, that's great. But I just wanted to make sure that you had at least that information. Some sort of help, but I don't have Yeah, but if their income is below the threshold, I'm sure they would qualify. They just need to be. Todd, what do we got going on over there? Should we bring it on? So I'm just saying that it, it, it shows for families, but it doesn't show. It doesn't show specifically for seniors. Just commenting on this, um, this assistance program. Uh, does not the affordable tax program? It does not specifically target seniors. I think there has to be an income basis for it. Um, but not sure. thank you for coming. Um, I'm not sure how long we've been going. Even well, it's been a really good conversation. I just have a quick question from my own curiosity. How many, how many here would attend some kind of a, uh, let's say, a monthly or some kind of workshop where in the community building here, um, if that were to occur, you know? What capacity? Uh, you know, to well, just informal training or like a kind of a help, you know, a meet where people share knowledge and uh, their expertise. So, so we had at least four or five people raise their hands. Let's turn that question back on you. What program would you come for? Uh, you asked what kind of program would we be offering? Better question would be, what kind of program would you want? What information would you want to get? Because if we can pursue this, then we can pursue something that meets what you actually want. I think for me and a lot of other people, doing Zoom is... Do Zoom or some type of meeting like that, meet up, uh, how to hook up your phone, how to get connected on it, do's and don'ts of it, Basic. of mm -hmm. adequate etiquette on it, you know, those types of things I think would help a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, old and young. 
Yeah. Um, I go with her. Okay. All right. I agree. The basics. I mean, how how to one what Zoom is. You explain <laughs> to some of these sure. elderly people what Zoom is, and now they can they can watch their grandkids and communicate and stuff. Not just show them, but show them how to use it mm -hmm. and how to get onto it. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly the basics. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. also the security involved yes. in the tech. Ahead, the security involved in it. They need to know how to use it, but not to be used by it. Yeah. Not yeah. to get hacked and Yeah, so that, get that's in an trouble. interesting thing you, you bring up. That had, I don't think we've mentioned that before at this meeting, but cybersecurity, people getting hacked, people getting tricked. Um, and it only takes one sure. button um, pushed. And the the ability of the the, the bad guys, if you will, to trick people um, is getting much greater very quickly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. And there's stuff that uh, only very recently you can have, um, a, my understanding is that this actually exists right now, where somebody can get three or four seconds of your voice recorded and they can then make a, an audio that sounds exactly like you and they can be calling up, uh, well, it, it works basic, better the other way around where it's your kid's voice saying, you know, oh my God, I just got in a horrible accident. I just need this money right now so I can get my car fixed. And it sounds just like them. And there are ways to figure that out. It's not gonna trick everybody, but I mean, the stuff that can be done these days is just amazing. Um, and I mean, knowledge is power to a certain degree. Just knowing that is possible helps a little bit. That's why um, AI is so scary. Yes, there's, <laughs> there are good sides to this AI revolution. There's plenty to be worried about, too. Somebody's going to twist it. Yeah. We all watch Terminator. I mean, come on. <laughs> so uh, for these classes, uh, do the, the two main models I see for it is one, classes, gatherings, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm trying not to assume too much. But the two main options I see is there will be a specific topic, and somebody will come prepared to more or less lecture on that topic and answer questions. Uh, it can be interactive, um, or a just more or less flat out Q and A question where, session where somebody comes and the the audience is the one driving the specific topics all the way down. Do you guys have a preference between those? A mix of both? Um, I'm thinking, in my opinion, I would think that a mix. If a facilitator came to the meeting with, okay, tonight main topic is Zoom. We're going to teach everybody how to use Zoom, how to get on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. After, after we go over that, then it's going to be open up to, okay, does anybody have any other new questions for okay. something else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your facilitator, I think, is going to have to be the one kind of pushing the, the main topic there. Okay. Yeah. Well, and it could even be, I, I can imagine a situation where the, a facilitator comes up with the main, they arrive with the main topic and the conversation immediately goes off the rails and something else becomes the main topic. Whoever's and as long as facilitating, they are going to yeah. have to be very open minded and very yeah. free flowing, I guess you could say. OK. You know, Zoom is nice, but you might need to Skype. And yes. All the other thingies. Yeah. Well, and to a certain degree, Zoom has become like Kleenex. When I go <laughs> get some puffs out of my box of puffs, I don't call it puffs. I call it a Kleenex. Zoom is to a certain degree the same way with video conferencing. Um, so, um, you know, knowing exactly what somebody, is it actually a Zoom meeting technically? Is it that company or is it a different one? Well, um, that's a, that can end up mattering a lot. I'm wondering which ones, which ones are most appropriate for what setting, because some of yes. them, like when they were trying to play music together, like our ukulele groups, some setting, some programs work better for that than others because of the language. Yeah. yeah, good point. You really got to watch that music stuff. <laughs> yes. I think if you could train the seniors or it, whether it's Zoom or Microsoft Meetings, whatever you're going to use, their family would adjust if that was what they were going to be using it for they would say, okay, well, we'll use that because that's what you know how to use. I don't think you need to train them on everything, you know, because you're going to come here and everybody's going to be learning, you know, it'd yeah. be hard to teach. Yeah. It'd be a lot. And then you gotta, you're building a community that can help itself. Mm -hmm. If you say, okay, well, you know, I just taught 15 people how to Zoom. Well, one person gets it a little bit better than the other ones. Maybe they could build their skills, you know, or they will be building their skills if they're using it. Mm -hmm. you know, we've been 
Zooming and Skyping for gosh, sure. 12 years. Well, and I can imagine where, okay, there was a, a yeah. session on yeah. Zoom or Web WebEx or Teams or whatever, and right. the, the people who were there, one of them says, to another person who was there, what was that one thing? I'm, yes. I, I'm getting hung up on this one part of what right. we learned. Do you remember what that guy said? Yeah. Ah, sure. And then yeah. you've got a little social and network that's helping each other out. I think that would be really valuable, like I said, if we had a way of, of making a, like a person who was, or you know, a group of people or like a little technical first responder group that helps people with their, honestly, like somebody who can help people with their technology issues that is pertinent to them. Like your TV's passcode is this and they have a little book. Like okay. I bought my mom a little book and she carries her little book in her purse. But now I see it's on her table, but that's another story, but it has, you know, pa passwords in it and not just passwords listed on a page. Right. Each page has a password or each page has a device and what that device's passwords are because that's what I found out works best for her because when she randomly changes her passwords, we put it under the device. But this is, this is you know, what, 10 years in the making. So, yeah, I mean, lots of little papers in an envelope that's in a computer case that sometimes she has with her and sometimes she doesn't. Right. So you, you're thinking if you can make a little thing for each person that they have their own reference. Yeah. yeah I've done a lot of it, but I don't want to okay. do it. I, I wouldn't even probably want to be on that little team. So, <laughs> so we've talked about though. some. We've talked about some possibilities for for uh, classes like this, gatherings, whatever we're going to call them here, and we've talked about doing it remotely through Zoom and that kind of thing. Uh, which maybe that can be part of it. But to to what degree do th those of you who do help other people with their technology, or not, uh, just who who would go to a class, um, to what degree do you travel? someplace where it could also be in person. I can imagine there's some things happening here, but maybe there's also some things happening at the Rainy River campus. Um, I know the library uh, has, in International Falls, answers a lot of tech questions. Um, and I know that there are other libraries where that they have somebody whose job is to be at the library to answer walk-in tech questions. That's just their job. That's the main thing they do. They're not stacking books so much. They're doing that. Um, and you know, there's a lot of different models out there. I try to soak up as many different ideas as possible. So when the, the situation comes up that fixes that fits that solution, they go, "Oh yeah, yeah, there's this thing." Um, and you know, maybe you guys travel, uh, you know, to Bemidji or whatever, Grand Rapids, uh, more often. There could be some some things like that where there's other classes uh, that might fit occasionally fit. You might adjust the timing of that shopping trip so that it lines up with a class that's somewhere else. I'm seeing some head noddings. This sound like it could potentially be part of the uh, education solution for well, building up the skills. Paul Bunyan actually offers repair services to devices that's using their internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that, do they, do they charge for that or is that free? You know, I've never used it, so I, I can't really speak on that. I just saw that it is offered and they did tell me I could bring down whatever, I don't remember what the device was, and I said, no, because I work on it every day. Uh -huh, no, uh -huh. thank you. Okay. So. And where would you have to bring the device? Uh, they have a, a place in Grand Rapids and a place in Bemidji, and they're certified Apple repair, so you can bring okay. in your Apple products because I know a lot of people, um, especially seniors, have gotten iPads to, to do the whole grandchild thing. Mm -hmm. so. All right. So I mean, you can look into you know, what that offers. I'm not going to stand here and read through all the little lists of questions and stuff that we had prepared to help stimulate things, but does anybody have any other thoughts that we haven't touched on, any things they want to want to address? Any, I, I mentioned before, we all, you all came here for a reason. We kind of want to know why. For many of you, I, I, could, I think I could do a reasonably job of, of inferring that from what you said, but anyone else want to speak to why uh, they came here? The main reason I came here is to see if you can get uh, internet uh, past the three miles limit or whatever. Yeah. And another thing, I'd like to know how much of a cost this is gonna cost people. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, we, will, we are working on getting uh, the areas expanded, the survey areas expanded. How much it would cost would be a combination of what those internet service providers charge in their areas. Typically, if they expand, they're gonna charge the same rate they charge where they already have service in the new areas. Um, plus the subsidy programs that exist, like the Affordable Connection Program and things like that. 
Um, more specifically than that, I couldn't tell you, say it would depend on the specific individuals and, and the specific internet service provider that comes to that area. But So the service provider that comes into the er mm -hmm. area could be $100 a month, right? Could be, yeah. I mean, the, the prices I typically see, um, gosh, I don't know if there's anything as cheap as $30, but um, starting rates for internet service, um, what would you say, you know, $40 to um, 60 for a starting rate? And if you want faster service and add-ons and adding telephone service and TV channels and things like that, then that, you know, jacks up the price from there. But starting rates fit 40 to $60 for yeah, our, our 40, 60? 60. around 60, 60 okay. and up is where the basic startup here. Okay. Are these, are these funds that are, that are being grant, the granted funds that are available for this program, are those funds specifically to get these, these uh, companies to expand their service, their service areas? Is that what this money is for? So the, the information gathering phase right, right now right. is to is to help the state set a statewide digital equity plan, and in that plan they will prioritize various things right. based on what they're hearing. I think um, in our area, that's a priority. Yes. yes. All of so, so, but primarily that's what this money is for the, in this Digital Equity Act, correct? In phase two, is yes. To expand, well, we're gathering information to determine mm -hmm. needs and then expand the service provider areas. That, would that be fair? Well, I suspect that that is going to be one of the one of the most common complaints right. is just having that initial access. How much they will also prioritize things like the affordability of devices, the ability to get skills training, um, uh, income subsidies, okay. so you can afford to pay this cable that comes to your house now. Can you can you afford to pay for it? Things like that. I mean. It'll be a mix of things. Okay, so that was but, that, that was my question. I just yeah. wanted to know what that money was actually for. Yeah. If it was to help these folks get internet that can't get it, mm -hmm. because that was kind of, I think and, that's our biggest hey, problem. And in addition yeah. to this program that we're mostly talking about tonight, there are other programs that are about that specifically, okay. about mm -hmm. providing that uh, that actual right, internet it's access. It's an awful lot of money, so yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's spread across the whole United States. You're right. I but. get that. But my. The reason I asked the question because my mm -hmm. understanding of it was it was to reach the rural areas to mm -hmm. include everybody in the high speed internet world as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the digital equity is a bit more broad than just internet access. But yes. Yeah. Okay. So and there are so there are also equity issues in big cities and stuff. You know, poverty uh, related issues and, and all that. So gotcha. um, so it's not that, only rural, would but those, would those would these funds cover you? Establishing educational classes and hiring somebody to do that—that's at least a potential. It, potential, um, yeah. Okay. Right. And Just it's certainly curious. something that I mean, from the very beginning, we've been aware of that right. yeah, um, right. as as one of the needs that's out there, and helping to, to massage it into a specific thing that right. can actually mm -hmm. then be proposed. Okay, well, I got a concrete idea. Here's what we're talking: once a month, we're going to do this; twice a month, we're going to do that. Okay. You've got these people that have in mind. Gotcha. This is the audience we're trying to reach. Will you fund this? Gotcha. Okay. Um, the more specific we can be, the easier it is to get funding. Is there going to be a reasonable division between rural and urban? Because often when it becomes a rural and urban situation, we don't get the money. Yeah. And we are, you know, I believe we're every bit as deserving of the money. Um, it just happens that way all the time, yep. uh, time and time again. <laughs> so if we, there's a way that there is some sort of earmarked money that is for rural communities. I think that is very important that that be known because I think you'll find a lot more support if they know that all this money wouldn't go in one pot, like would not yeah. go right down to the Twin Cities. Because yeah. we are, I know there are, there is definitely digital deserts down there. There's definitely areas that need this, uh, but there's also areas, rural, outstate, everywhere yeah. that need something and it might not be everybody needs it i've got great internet but i deal right. almost well i would say once a week with an internet issue so that's not mine <laughs> <laughs> so it is needed and then i know and it's as simple as just expanding it mm -hmm. that's all I, they have to do I certainly I share your concerns. Um, I, I hear that from a lot of folks. Um, I hear the right words being said a lot at this phase of this particular thing. So I'm cautiously optimistic that yes, there will be a major emphasis on rural Minnesota, in our case, rural America in general.